among the clinical trials that are being presented here in terms of late breakers, we have one of the most popular, it seems, at this meeting, ASH 2015. It's on targeted immunotherapy, and I'm with Dr. James Kokendurfer, who is from the Center for Cancer Research at the National Cancer Institute, a physician scientist working to develop uh, immunotherapies for lymph lymphoma, leukemia, and multiple myeloma, and your current work focuses on chimeric antigen receptor T-cell therapies. Some background first. What are you, what are you working on here that, that needs a, a extra work, extra treatment? Well, the, the disease that we're going after with this particular project is multiple myeloma, which is a, an often incurable disease of plasma cells. Um, our goal was to develop a T-cell therapy that would um, be effective against multiple myeloma for patients that are resistant to other, other treatments, such as chemotherapy. Now, in this case, with the, the T cells, you, I mean, if you can build the right antibody, in theory, you can treat a lot of different things, correct? Yes. But in this case, you're going after one in particular. Yes, this, this treatment's for multiple myeloma, it's, and the target antigen is called BCMA, which stands for B cell maturation antigen. So these CARTs, as they get abbreviated to, uh, explain this approach that you're taking. So th this is a gene therapy um, method where we take the patient's own T cells and genetically modify them in the lab to express a receptor that allows the T cell to then specifically target the cancer cell. And in this case, this was a first in man experience. Yes, this BCMA car is the first time anyone's tested this in men. I developed this therapy at the NCI about two or three years ago in mice, and now we've transitioned into a clinical trial over the past year, and this is the first in humans test of the anti-BCMA car. So what did you see? We treated a total of 12 patients. We started with very low doses. In the low doses, we didn't see um, much response at all, but since we achieved higher doses on our clinical trial, we've seen some very impressive responses. Particularly, um, three patients, one had a very good partial remission, and then another patient who received uh, cells on the highest dose level had a complete eradication of his, of his multiple myeloma to achieve what is called a stringent complete remission. This is the most stringent um, measurement of multiple myeloma in the body, a very advanced methods such as flow cytometry and um, immunofixation, electrophoresis, could not detect any multiple myeloma in this patient's body. Um, it's all the more impressive for two reasons. First of all, this patient started out with a huge amount of myeloma, which was taking over more than 90% of his bone marrow. And the second thing that makes it impressive is this patient had a prior autologous stem cell transplant, which included a huge dose of chemotherapy, and he relapsed after three months from that. So he was very resistant to chemotherapy. I mean, you're obviously optimistic when you go into something like this. Did you actually surpass where you thought you'd end up with this? I, I, I think we were pretty optimistic because we have a lot of experience treating other, with people with other types of CAR T cells, but I would say we're pleasantly surprised with this result. I also want to emphasize that the results are very early, oh, yeah. and we have very short follow-up, and also the patients who had the responses also suffered some substantial toxicity. Yeah, that was the next the issue I was going to talk about. So what, it, what is that, and how, how so does it occur? We had a variety of, of toxicities. Um, the patients that had the responses, very similar to what we see with other types of CAR T-cell therapies for leukemia, had fevers, fast heart rates, low blood pressure, um, and some other abnormalities, liver test abnormalities, some temporary kidney dysfunction, some muscle breakdown, and prolonged low blood counts. Low blood counts are a problem that plague multiple myeloma patients anyway, so they might be more susceptible to that to begin with. But we had two patients that had fairly prolonged low blood counts, but I'm happy to report all these toxicities have now been alleviated and the patients are doing great that had good responses. Um, but we have to keep in mind, though, that the CAR T cells can be, although very powerful against malignancy, also they have toxicity. Yeah. So where to next? What are you doing? So we're going to continue with this trial, the current trial that I reported here. We also are moving into a multi-center trial with a biotech company called Bluebird Bio. That will be a, a slightly different CAR, but very similar to the one that we reported here. And we're going to hopefully start enrolling patients on a multi-center trial within about one month. Well, congratulations, first off, because you were swamped by the media yesterday. I mean, I'm surprised you're not suffering PTSD from the number of uh, reporters who just came sweeping towards you at the end of the uh, press conference. So thank you very much. And what's the timeline? You, you say that the, the, the next phase is already underway? 
Yeah, we, we actually have the, the multi-center trial is open at the NCI um, right now. Um, we are accepting patients and we hope to be able to start treating a, a patient in early January. Describe the patients you're looking for. We're looking for patients who've had um, pre-treated multiple myeloma with at least um, three prior lines of therapy. So it's patients with fairly advanced myeloma. It's a phase one trial, so we need to take advanced patients. In addition to having advanced myeloma, they need to be fairly healthy overall aside from that. The creatinine, which is a measure of kidney function, cannot be higher than 1.6. They have to have generally normal organ function, normal heart and lung function, a performance status of um, that's a good performance status for those that know ECOG-1, which is a, a means that you can basically do normal light household activities such as cooking and um, cleaning the house. So generally healthy patients, but with pretreated myeloma. Okay. And for obviously ASH in 2015, we have got, this is one of the most popular late breakers without a doubt. Lots of other news and information is around in ASH Clinical News as well as online. Please look for that. I'm Rick McGuire.